Hi there, welcome in that new GLOM tutorial which will show how to use sensors, filters and have entities kind of speaking to each other. So speaking to each other in the sense of um, I would like to know from this blue entity who amongst the green target took them, uh, who amongst the green character took them as a target. So to get started, uh, I created a polygon here, uh, a cylinder, which will act as my sensor. So what I'll do is I select that cylinder and I uh, click on the sensor locator to create my first sensor. And uh, I'm going to do it another time to create another sensor. And we're going to hide that cylinder for now. We do not need it anymore. I'm going to rename this sensor um, green character. And I'm going to rename that one sensor blue characters. Great. So um, I'll just start by initializing my behaviors. So let me just remove this for a minute. And that's from my previous test, but I'd like to recreate this from scratch. Great. So I've got my green characters with their entity types. I've got my blue characters with their entity types as well and their home behavior graph. And if I want to use that sensor into my entities and have them being active, I need to bring an activate sensor uh, behavior. I'm going to connect the sensor blue character uh, to that behavior. So you hold the shift uh, button on your keyboard while having that sensor being selected. So I'm going to map this here. So now I'm saying those blue characters will have that blue sensor and those green characters will have that um, green sensor. Okay, if I uh, run my simulation now and I open the visual feedback tool, I'll see that my green character, they perceive the other green character next to them and the blue entity in front of them. So, so far so good. And that character here feel um, the six green characters in front of them and the one um, on the right. So what we said is we want those green characters to target the closest one of those blue characters and we want those blue characters to know about the targeting system and maybe take the closest one or whatsoever. So what I'll do is um, I'll start by creating a golem attribute. Oops, sorry about that. Let's remove that entity type, which I do not need. Here we go. So I'll create um, a new attribute for my green characters, which will store the ID of the target they can have. So I'm going to add a new entity type attribute target, and um, I'm going to say it's an integer value. It's a golem attribute uh, compared to a PP attribute. We recommend not to use PP attribute. Golem, attrib golem attributes are way more efficient. Let's uh, provide some uh, initial values to zero, and let's provide this target entity ID. OK. So now we've got uh, that new attribute. Let's probably copy the value uh, for a minute. And what we'd like to do is um, create some behaviors here to fill that value and update that value uh, with some specific rules. So here we'll take the closest entity of type blue. So for that, I'm going to drag and drop a channel operator behavior. And I'm going to put it in parallel with my activate sensor. So my activate sensor will fill my sensor values and channel operators will read from the sensors, vary stuff, filter them and write this into the target uh, entity ID. So let's go into the channel operator. Let's expand the uh, channel operator editor. Let's remove that previous graph that I do not need anymore. So as I said, what we'll do is we want to write out that value into a golem attribute. That golem attribute is going to be my target entity ID. Great. And where does that value come from? So I can use one of the channels. So let's bring an input node. And let's look for something called object ID. Oops. Um, so you've got a, a, documentation pa a documentation page which um, cover all the channels being available. But here, um, what we can ask is um, for a specific behavior and activate sensor behavior, we want to read um, an object ID and the object ID is going to be at location 0, 1, 2, 3. So it really depends on how you sort things out. But if you say, I want to keep, uh, I want to sort my uh, entity IDs by the closest, for example, what you have at uh, index 0 will be the closest entity ID. So let's 
uh, move on with this. We're going to replace the behavior name for my uh, channel operator with the name of that actual activate sensor behavior. And we'll see, we'll say that we want to get uh, the first uh, index, which means index zero. And uh, we're going to say this is a going channel. So here I'm saying uh, from the activate sensor behavior, I want to read object ID at index zero. So what should it give us is here, we can see that this entity perceive uh, entity 1001, 2001, 3001. So the first one in that list is going to be 1001. So let's uh, check. So we're going to um, target entity ID. Uh, we got a, an error here. So let's see what's going on here. Mm -hmm. Did not find any entity golem attribute named. Okay, wait, wait, wait. I am under the impression that that behavior, I put it, okay. I actually assigned that behavior, so this is my mistake here, sorry about that. Uh, but uh, I'm not gonna cut the video here, so that gives a way to troubleshoot that. But what I did uh, here is I put that channel operator behavior on the blue characters and I created that attribute on the green character. So this is why I'm not able to read it. So what I'll do, what I need to do is actually move that channel operator to my uh, of a type here, so I can just delete it. If I delete it, it will still be into the outliner. Uh, there's a parallel operator here. I can leave it or just remove it. If I want to remove it, that's just uh, doing this connection. Or else I could have left it because uh, there were just one behavior. And now I can go back into my uh, green type here, bring my channel operator back, put it in parallel. And now I would expect to have the right result. Great, excellent. So um, now it says that activate sensor one is not found on this entity. This, is, this makes sense because that behavior is not called one, it's called activate sensor two. Uh, sorry about that, we're gonna fix this. So I probably should have renamed those anyway. Um, and uh, we're good, right? It's just, I need to find a way to validate this. Okay, great. So. There we go. There we go. So now we can see that what comes out from the input node is 1001 as I expected and write this out into uh, that golem attribute as value 1001. If you open the channel operator, you have the exact same thing here. If we uh, check that guy here, that guy is actually 1001. So the closest one is 2001. So we've got a problem here. Is, well, no problem, but we've got a, um, what we can uh, see into the system here is that they are gonna be sorted by name. So I need to filter those results to say, I want to sort this by probably distance. I want to only keep the blue ones and so on and so forth. So let's go into my filter, the sensor green filter. So let's make sure that we pick the right one this time. And we can see that we've got filters attributes. So the first thing we can do is say, we want to keep only specific crowd entity types. So I'm gonna create a crowd entity type filter and I'm gonna say what I want to keep is only my blue characters. So um, green characters are gonna be one, blue characters are gonna be two. So if I go into my green characters filter here, I say I only want to keep entity types two. So the blue guys. Let's run this one again. Now we'll see that um, all these uh, green entities get filtered, they're not here anymore, and now I've got my blue entities. They're still sorted by um, the order, the alphabetical numerical order here. So we want to add another filter here, which is um, sort by distance. So I'm gonna say, I want to keep um, the closest one by default, and that will be the first one in the list. So let's see what I get now. So here now it says that uh, 8001 is the closest, so I expect 8001 to be this one here. So this is 8001, so this is expected. And I expect that one to point to 7001, uh, um, 7, and I expect 7001 to be that one there. So we are good. So okay, now each entity points and stored into an attribute, um, a specific ID of a blue character being the closest one. I can use the spreadsheet to figure this out. So I've got my six entities here, half of them um, um, address 8001, and half of them address 7001. 
So here into my chops, I just write out uh, an ID, but I could obviously write out also, um, you know, just a vector position of my entity and use this as a target. Here, my example is just, I want to read that value now back from the blue characters. So I have a way to have the characters speaking to each other, right? So let's see um, what I can uh, do on my side here. So I've got my casual man characters there and they've got their sensor. Once again, their sensors is actually feeling everything in the scene, everyone in the scene. So we're gonna filter out this as well. So we're gonna say, okay, first let's filter. So let's go into the sensor blue character. And uh, I know I want to read this into my um, green characters only because that ID target entity ID attribute only exists on the green ones. So uh, let's help the system and say, I do only want to filter entity of type one. So let's bring entity of type one. So if I run this thing now, I'll have uh, my uh, perceived entity only of type uh, green characters. And now let's filter it by attribute. So we got another filter, which allows you to um, filter by a golem attribute value. So let's add this. So here it says, um, let's put this attribute and the name of an attribute. So this is, if I remember well, target entity ID. Let's copy that strength to ensure that I do not make any errors. Let's go back into my blue character sensor into my golem attribute and write this out. And I want to compare this with a value. So here, that guy is 7,001, that guy is 8,001. So um, I do not want to create two different sensors to um, be able to run that onto my character. So I can use one uh, <coughs> optimization that is written into the documentation, a uh, specific keyword which is called GAD, GID. So which stands for Golem ID. <coughs> now I'm saying if my entity type is of type one and it has a Golem attribute uh, called target entity index and it has exactly the same value than my Golem ID, let's keep those entities. So let's see what we got. If we run the same now, we'll see that this entity only has uh, three characters now and that uh, character there only has three character there uh, in it, which are the closest one. So now we can do exactly the same thing than before, keep the closest one, write this into an attribute and know exactly who's the first, who's the closest entity which may uh, come to us. That may, be end, that may be handy if you do like a battle scene uh, and you have some types of characters who've picked an enemy and you want that enemy to know about it and reach that exact same character. So this is a way to have the entities speaking to each other. So that makes sense. And uh, see you into the next video.